I got a confession to make. I tried sculpting in Blender, and I liked it. Blender was the first 3D software I ever touched. This was back in Blender 2.7, when Blender made as much sense as, well, right-click selection. But after going to school and learning ZBrush, I never looked back. But lately, I've seen some amazing sculpts done in Blender. And for that reason, and that reason only, Nani? I decided it was time to give sculpting in Blender a shot. At the beginning, I just wanted to dive right into it and uh, see if I could sculpt something without any research. When it comes to beginner friendliness, I don't know the exact feeling I had opening up ZBrush the first time, but in Blender, everything felt kind of simplified. So Blender has these convenient UI presets, where you can choose a step in the workflow, and the UI will automatically create a workspace optimized for exactly that. So if you're gonna sculpt, you choose the sculpting preset, and all the sculpting tools will be conveniently placed. Blender is not a dedicated sculpting software, so it seems to be focusing on the most basic things. And as a sculptor with a more traditional approach, I can appreciate that. Personally, I like to use a few brushes and just explore with shapes. In comparison, ZBrush has this overflowing UI and features that works in a way that looks cool, but at the same time, as a beginner, might make you want to quit and get a real job instead. So tackling my first sculpt in Blender, I knew I needed more polygons than the default cube already had. Subdividing only gets you so far, as the limitation of the layout of polygons will, well, limit you pretty fast. I looked for something that gave me more sculpting-optimized topology, like Dynamesh in ZBrush. That's when Dynetopo came into my life, which gave me more resolution wherever I sculpted. This was super convenient to build up volume and getting the majority of the shapes. With Dynetopo, I could explore the different brushes. The amount of brushes was quite limited in Blender. One of ZBrush's strengths is the variation of brushes. That said, I usually stick to 4 or 5 which basically you can find in Blender as well. A brush for deforming the sculpt, one for adding clay, one for sharp engravings, and one for smoothing out brush strokes. And the brushes actually felt very nice to work with, with great pressure sensitivity. With only these few brushes, I was able to actually produce something, although I quickly experienced the downside of relying purely on Dynetopo and sculpting. If not careful, the sculpt can become quite dense and cause Blender to slow down or, in my case, crash a couple hundred times. The problem was that no matter the change I did with Dynetopo Active, the resolution in these areas would increase. So if I just wanted to build up a little more volume in areas, even these areas would get affected by the Dynetopo, resulting in thousands of polygons in flat areas with no actual details. So after a quick search, I got introduced to the Remesh option. This automatically remeshes the model, so if I had added a little too much resolution, I could remesh the model to get a more optimized poly count based on the shape of the sculpt to keep Blender from crashing. Having a background in digital sculpting and not to mention Blender in general was a big help. As I already knew how to navigate, it's also much easier taking the already established sculpting workflow I have from ZBrush and transfer it into Blender, rather than learning the workflow on top of the new software. After exploring and just getting into the workflow, I decided it was time to take it a step further and sculpt something a little more interesting. Now, when sculpting, if you want to play it safe, always go for a creature. Because if you mess up and end up creating an abomination, you can basically say it was on purpose. So, with a creature in mind, I started blocking out the rough pose by just adding objects and moving them around. Joining the objects and remesh to combine them. A big problem that I always advise against was that I worked without references. You think you're hella clever, saving time by skipping the research, but in the end, you'll use way more time trying to figure out how things actually look. This is the classical trap people tend to fall in. The reference you have in your mind is never as good as the reference you can find. With a quick Google search. Initially, I wanted this to be some kind of abomination-looking creature, but instead it became a werewolf, apparently. Swapping between sculpting and object mode made adding teeth very easy, and with the mirror modifier in Blender, the process went super fast. I feel being able to swap between different modes and edit the model on an object or even vertex level is really beneficial. It wasn't before I was placing the head I noticed how weird the pose actually looked. Without the head, the pose looked acceptable. Again, use references. So I had to adjust the pose, which forced me to use the masking brush. And to be honest, the masking options were a mess. Usually I like to use lasso to mask, but when masking with lasso and blender, nothing happened. I instead made do with the box masking and the brush. 
which kind of worked. Repositioning wasn't working in the park either, as the pivot point by default were just way off. I assume there is a way of changing the pivot point in sculpting mode. When modeling, you're able to position the cursor somewhere and make the pivot point revolve around that cursor. But when I tried to do this in sculpting mode, the gizmo didn't update. So I kind of just brute forced the heck out of it. With a solid foundation, I could just focus on adding details and tweaking the shapes. So that's my first real experience, sculpting in Blender. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me struggle. And if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. I really found sculpting in Blender to be quite enjoyable, actually. Obviously, there is a lot for me to explore and I only touched the surface, but I will definitely be sculpting more in Blender. If you're just looking for that traditional, no crazy extra tools sculpting experience, then Blender is. You have all the essentials to create decent sculpts, and if you're doing more broad 3D work, you will eventually have to take your sculpt out of ZBrush and into a 3D package for proper texturing, animation, and so on anyways. That said, ZBrush is still a monster in terms of handling poly counts, and I feel you'll have a much easier time getting this sculpt hyper detailed without budgeting or thinking about the issues that comes with millions of polygons. I'm sure it isn't a problem getting the sculpt hyper detailed in Blender as well, but it's not as simple as just subdividing the heck out of it, unless you have a computer worth more than well, you'll ever earn as an artist. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and until next time, 